A shift in habits for some communities, churches and schools taking precautions to reduce the risk of getting the flu. Since October, the flu has been linked to more than 450 deaths in Arizona, and that includes two children. Across the country, the flu is still considered widespread. Here's a look at the CDC's most recent data, tracking where cases are widespread for the week ending on February 10th. It includes Arizona, along with 47 other states and Puerto Rico. In that one week, there were 968 lab-confirmed cases in Arizona, bringing the total up to nearly 23,000 flu cases for the entire season. That's an increase of 575 percent compared to last year. Last year at this time, there were 3,200 cases of the flu. Michael Warby heads the University of Arizona's Ecology and Evolutionary Biology Department and explained why this year's flu season is so severe. The current flu season is a bad one. Uh, we'll probably see more than 50,000 deaths in the, in the U.S. Uh, all told, and it will probably kill more people than the 2009 uh, virus did. Now, 2009 was in the news even more because it's what we call a pa it was what we call a pandemic virus. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a special word that we use when a virus moves uh, from the animal reservoir into the human population. So it's a new virus. It has the potential to be explosive. The 2009 virus was bad but nowhere near as bad as some of the pandemic viruses, influenza viruses that we've seen in the past. Okay, you're a scientist, you know why. Can you give us some indication as to how we got to this point? Uh, we, we know some of uh, why, we don't know all of the, of the reasons. Uh, and with flu, uh, there are big years and there are small years. We know a little bit of, of why that is, uh, there are a few different flu viruses actually that circulate. Two of them are called influenza A viruses and those are ones that people will have heard about H1N1, H3N2. Uh, another one, influenza B, also circulates. It's one that rarely makes the news, uh, but it's a pretty nasty virus as well. It actually causes more deaths than H1N1, uh, but fewer deaths than H3N2. Uh, and this year is primarily an H3N2 year. That tends to be the virus uh, that causes the most trouble in terms of flu viruses. Uh, this year, unfortunately, uh, another factor uh, is the, the vaccine, uh, the component of it that fights H3N2 uh, is not working as well as uh, we would like. Uh, it's grown, the virus is growing in eggs. And what happens sometimes, uh, scientists choose the virus ahead of time, the strain that we're gonna put in those vaccines. Mm -hmm. We grow it in eggs. Uh, the virus can sometimes adapt to the egg cell, small changes that usually don't make any difference at all. On this occasion, a change uh, that uh, the, the, the virus made as it's growing in the eggs actually made it sort of not work quite as well at triggering that immune response that we like to see. In your research, what are you learning about how we've gotten to this point? My lab has been studying the relationship between the severity of, uh, of how influenza affects you as an adult, um, uh, the connection between that and which strain of the flu you first got as a kid. Maybe the key thing is a virus can hurt you if it's quite different than what your immune system imprinted on that very first time you saw influenza as a kid. Okay, so if you know when someone was born and you look back at, okay, what influenza A virus was circulating in humans at that period of time, that's telling you something that is turning out to be really important about how they're going to respond to flu viruses now. These clues are actually now reshaping how flu vaccines are, are going to be made. Uh, and so it's a kind of exciting time where ideas that were incubated here at the University of Arizona are uh, really starting to impact um, the whole national strategy for dealing with this important 
uh, pathogen.